Well, you have to see it and hear it to believe it. The Pope says that Christ failed on the cross. The entire of Christendom is based on Christ laying down his life willingly in the face of death and hell and being tortured to forgive us of our sins, the ultimate sacrifice, God sacrificing his son, an echo of Abraham about to sacrifice his son, but God following through on it. Let's roll the grand pontiff and what he had to say in Philadelphia yesterday. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail, and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. And then you go to the full clip, I have the transcript. He, he, he doesn't continue to say, but then Christ succeeded. He just says he failed. When, of course, Christ rose again, if you are a Christian and you believe that, and it was the greatest triumph. Jakari Jackson laid it out. We're going to come back with the full clip uh, and also Jakari Jackson uh, later in the hour and visit this, but that's just one of the huge things we have here. And I kind of psychoanalyzed myself this weekend why I've been so particularly vicious to the Pope, it's because I'm upset by it. I mean, you know, at least in the past, Catholics were anti-communist and pro-life, and this guy's promoting global government, carbon taxes, one world religion business, Chrislam, the merger of Christianity and Islam, and clearly Christianity's under massive attack. I know the Catholic Church was blackmailed with the pedophile scandal to put this guy in. Now he's covering that up. And so I just feel desperate, but I should attack the Pope more professionally because it's more effective uh, than calling him names like scumbag and things. But people didn't believe me eight, nine years ago when I was sent by a listener a clip of Pastor John Hagee saying, Christ did not come to be the Messiah, who was a rebel, who was dealt with wisely. That's a quote, by the way. And folks go then dig it up and find it and can't believe it. He wrote a book about it. And this is what the globalists want. They want religious leaders, Protestant, Catholic, whatever. They'll start blurring the lines. And his full quote is very Jewitical is the term they use, or Jesuit-oriented. Hillary says she runs her life according to Georgetown Jewitical thinking. Where you could get what he's saying that Christ physically was killed but had the greater triumph. But it's very twisted and has double meanings. And when he says it, he says it with wide eyes like he just said a bad word. And that's what it's all about is lowering the deity of Christ, lowering it, lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. And those ideals. It is true that you don't see the fruits of your labor a lot of times in your lifetime. Van Gogh, the highest selling painter in the world. An average painting of his goes for about $52 million. Japanese elites will pay $100, $150 million for a Van Gogh. He only sold one painting in his life. So I certainly understand that labors don't give you instant gratification. InfoWars is an example of that, but as we just go year after year, the drumbeat gets louder, and now we've got battering ram power to just ram into the globalists and tear huge holes in the side of their operations. But with great power comes great responsibility and comes, like our guest said yesterday, Joe Bannister, we're now meeting shields and spears because we're now in the big time. He was on with us for an hour last week. The consummate Vatican insider, will be joining us from Rome, Italy, Leo Zagami, author of the best-selling book, The Last Pope. He predicted three years before Pope Francis ascended to the throne that 
he would be a Jesuit pope. He named Pope Francis by name uh, and one other person that he thought would be put in place via blackmail. That indeed happened. So he said he would come back with us this week to give commentary on the Pope's tour of D.C., New York, and, of course, Philadelphia. From the District of Criminals to the state of New York uh, to the state of Pennsylvania and the cities therein. We will also play a commentary uh, that was shot live on the street by Jakari Jackson, where Pope Francis said Jesus failed on the cross, humanly speaking. When Christ said, I am giving my life, I lay it down willingly, um, we will quote from the Bible, the Pope knows full well what it says, and this is the very nature of the New Age, the very nature of the occult, the very nature of the Illuminati, is to downgrade Christ. You notice the UN isn't attacking radical Islam, the UN isn't attacking any other religion, it's going after Christianity, Christianity is the most persecuted religion from within and from without. Because it's not compatible with the one world religion and the system that's coming into place. And I'm not just singling out Catholics here. I'm singling out the Protestant church and other major denominations. They're all basically singing from the same piece of music now. Which is ecumenical, world government, one world religion, garbage. And I had always strayed away from criticizing Catholics. I saw a lot of good fruits from Catholics. The people fighting abortion, fighting socialism, communism. But now, with the establishment media praising the Pope, you can see that this is just another sign of the times and how bad this push for world government's really gotten. So that's in the second hour. We'll have open phones uh, the second half with Leo Zagami for your questions or comments. And then, of course, in the third hour, we'll cover a lot of other news. We're going to try this hour to be disciplined and get to the news because we've got Obama's speech at the U.N. We have huge economic news. We have massive news. NASA scientists find evidence of flowing water on Mars during the summer. Mars is extremely habitable. Ancients could... You know, the first telescopes 300, 400 years ago, I consider that ancient times compared to now, though it's more modern compared to true ancient times, you know, 6,000 plus years ago, could, could, could see the rivers on Mars. And of course, folks 200, 300 years ago thought that there might even be canals on Mars, but Mars does have an atmosphere, it does have a northern and southern ice cap that had been shrinking till about a decade ago from not global warming, but solar system-wide warming because the sun was in a really hot phase. Now it's gone into one of the coldest phases ever recorded in over 200 years by British astronomers. They're the first to record it with accurate devices. That's so why we have Greenwich Mean Time and everything else based in England because they had the best scientists, let's just face it. That after the Germans and the Italians. And the sun is probably the coolest ever recorded in modern times right now. And so look out. That's going to cause a lot of weather changes here. And you're going to have the establishment running around, hopping around, calling for carbon indulgences to be paid to His Holiness uh, Al Gore and Barack Hussein Obama or will be sent to global warming or climate change purgatory. You know, Mount Vesuvius uh, didn't blow up and cover Pompeii and molten ash and lava because the Romans had uh, too many outdoor fireplaces. It happened because the Earth is always changing and tectonic plates, only about a mile and a half thick, float on molten magma. So I guess that congressman that thinks islands float, he thinks Guam floats, it's really just a mountain on the undersea floor, obviously. But in a way, he's, he's telling the truth in a way because the entire plate, that, that particular Pacific plate, does float on lava. And I guess sometimes they do capsize. If a giant asteroid, say five miles across, made of nickel, was to slam again into, say, the Yucatan Peninsula, yes, you'd have piercing holes through the magma into the earth and lava 
shooting out into space and then getting into the atmosphere and causing a dark age for a couple hundred thousand years. How's that sound? And I don't mean a dark age where they ban literature and science and mathematics and, 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 and medicine. I mean a dark age where the entire planet's freezing. <coughs> yeah, that was Hank Johnson. Thinks Guam could capsize. <laughs> Anyways, I'm digressing. Huge, gigantor news. NASA scientists find evidence of flowing water on Mars. Of course, Buzz Aldrin said that on this show a few years ago. And they had water on the moon that he'd already found it. But they weren't allowed to tell the public. And they just went wild and started saying the same folks that put the obelisk on the moon of Mars. The same ones put the pyramids. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Uh, why are you saying this on my show? Nowhere else. I'm not saying Aldrin's crazy. I just... I'm not even allowed to say some, another thing Aldrin told me off air. And, and I'm not trying to sound like I'm special or something, but this, this, this weekend I was laying there in bed for about an hour during the day trying to take a nap because I had a sinus headache from mold allergies. And I was laying back trying to get rid of the beginnings of a migraine headache. And I just started thinking about how weird my life is. And I just like, is this the matrix? Is this a dream? Is this really happening? We really have congressmen that say that islands float? And the second guy to walk on the moon comes on my show and says, aliens built the pyramids? I mean, why me? Let's continue. Under pressure, McConnell pushed to resign as Senate Majority Leader, and he will go down. There's a large contingent in the military, in government, and in corporations that don't want to gut America, don't want to bankrupt America, don't want to cloward and pivot America, and anyone caught working with this plan is going to be dealt with. And as soon as McConnell and as soon as Boehner are gone, there is a major fight to replace them with patriots. And then you know what's going to happen? Instead of patriots being indicted for no reason, there's going to be indictments of people in the Democratic Party, and they know that. And not because folks want to have this dangerous war with them. People now realize that America is being destroyed by design. There is a plan to wreck the country. And there's large contingents of Republicans now that aren't going to play politics and aren't going to work with the Democrats because they understand it is a political death battle. And the Democrats broke a hundred-year-old compact that was private and quiet that the two parties wouldn't try to destroy each other. And that agreement has been destroyed by Obama, and so a war is now on in the power structure. You heard it here first. And we're going to see in this fight, 1776 Part 2, just who's got the will and who's got the power and who's got the people. But I wouldn't be betting on all the corrupt and all the scum. GOP discontent that helped sink John Boehner isn't easing up. That's why Boehner and the Democrats put their full money and full power against the Tea Party. And if you read the White House publications, their full hate at the Drudge Report, Infowars, World Net Daily, Breitbart, Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and it doesn't mean I even agree with all those people I just listed, but none of those people want to bankrupt the country. None of those people want to bring Sharia law in. None of those people want to break America's power. None of those people want to wreck the dollar. None of those people want to maneuver us in destruction like George Soros does. By the way, that Nazi collaborator piece of trash is in the news calling for Europe to accept over a million radical Muslims a year and pay for everything. From a Romanian Nazi collaborator who's still around like some living fossil, like a dirt dauber nest on your roof, lecturing everyone about how we've got to accept all these people just because he literally hates the West and wants to wreck it and just screw it up. Trump has come out with, uh, I've, I've read over the Wall Street Journal article, what really makes sense as a super duper tax program, a massive tax decrease for the middle class and the nouveau riche and the working poor, not as big as what Kennedy did, but similar, and a whopping 10% levy on all, which it should be like 50%, on all the multinational U.S.-based companies that wrote the laws where they're 
tax exempt, so they take all their profits outside. Trump understands we need to bring a large portion of that money back, but it shouldn't be 10% because they haven't paid more than 20 years basically any taxes. They take their profits outside the country, 